What's up, guys? It's Spencer from The Fantasy Files, and today I'm going to take a break from the norm a little bit and review not a book, but a reading app. It's kind of like Spotify, but it's for books, and it's called Scribd. It actually has a lot in common with the Libby app, which is basically a free library service. But the difference is that it's not isolated to whatever zip code your library card is in, and you don't have to wait for books while other people are reading them. We'll get into all that info in a second, but first, if you haven't subscribed, why? Why do you hate me? Subscribing helps the channel a lot with getting seen by the algorithm and also releases dopamine in my brain whenever I see that little number go up. You have direct control over my dopamine release in my head. So maybe, maybe just hit the button. And while you're over there, it never hurts to leave a like on the video as well. With that out of the way, let's talk about Scribd and see if it's right for you. So I guess I'll start with why I started using Scribd. It was recommended to me by Mick, uh, who's been a guest on our podcast a few times now. Um, I was looking for Bonds of Chaos, and it, it looked like he had been reading it, and I was trying to figure out how he had done that because it wasn't on Audible yet. Um, and he told me about Scribd, and that's where I got to read uh, Bonds of Chaos. It's, it's part of the Threadlight trilogy by Zach Argyle. Really good trilogy, go check it out. So it has a 30 day free trial and I initially just signed up for the 30 day trial to read Bonds of Chaos and then I was gonna cancel it and that's all I really planned on using the service for because I didn't really know anything about it. But as I started exploring the app a little bit more, I was like, oh, I could check out this book and I could check out this book and it kind of just went on and on. And I ended up using it for, I think I've been using it for like a month and a half now, maybe almost two months. Um, but one month sounds better in the YouTube title, honestly. But I've used it enough now to kind of formulate some opinions on it and see some of the things that it's really good at and some of the things that it's really bad at. So I just wanted to tell you guys about it in case you didn't know it existed. So basically, this is a streaming service for books. Uh, there's audiobooks and regular books, but it definitely shines in the audiobook department. Uh, you pay a monthly service fee, it's $11.99, so it's the same as one Audible credit, which I thought was really cool. Um, so it's automatically worth it if you're reading more than two books a month, you're already getting more than your money's worth. And basically it's like Spotify for, for books. You can, you just pay the monthly fee and you can read or listen to as many as you want. Um, and they're all there in the app ready to go. You can also download them. You don't have to stream them. So, you know, you can go through their collection and just pick ones that you want to download. You can hop on a plane just like you would with Audible and shut off your data connection and still have your book there to listen to. So let's look at some pros and cons here. I'll start with the pros because there are quite a few. So it's fairly cheap. At $11.99 a month, it's less than a Netflix subscription. And so far I've used this way more than I've used Netflix. I hardly ever use that service, but I sure as hell pay for it every month because I'm an idiot consumer. It's also got a pretty big library of books with some exceptions. We'll talk about that in the cons, but here I'll, I'll list what I've read. So like I said, I started with Bonds of Chaos uh, by Zach Argyle. And then I went on to realize that they had a pretty good selection of HP Lovecraft. And HP Lovecraft is one of those authors that I, I've been wary of just because I didn't know if I would like his works or not. And I never wanted to spend a whole Audible credit on it. Um, but when I saw it here in the streaming service, I was like, oh, I can try it out and I'm not paying any extra money. And I ended up reading it and loving it. So now I'm an HP Lovecraft fan and I've read a couple of his other books. Bone White by Ronald Malfi. This was a book that was recommended to me a while ago, but again, I was wary of spending a credit on it. When I saw it on this app, I read it. It's like one of my favorite books now. It's the only book that's ever like truly scared me. So I was really happy to find it in here. Um, I started The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. I didn't like it. 
Brother by Anya Alburn. Uh, this is a horror book that was also recommended to me. It was okay. I, I kind of DNF'd it for now. The Dunwich Horror by H.P. Lovecraft. I like that. Uh, the Reddening. The Voice of the Night by Dean Koontz. Scribd has a ton of Dean Koontz books as well as Stephen King. I think that Scribd has more Dean Koontz than it does Stephen King, uh, but it has almost like his whole library, all, Dean Koontz's whole library. So that alone is like, okay, I should probably keep this app for a while so I can go down this huge backlog of Dean Koontz books. I read Warbreaker and Elantris by uh, Brandon Sanderson, and they have the graphic audio versions, and I believe they also have the regular versions, but I listened to the graphic audio. It was phenomenal. I was super happy to be able to read those because that's something that I really wanted to dig into after The Lost Metal. And then The Hope of Elantris, the short story, the Moonlit Mind, another Dean Koontz book. And right now I'm reading 112263 by Stephen King, which I think might make it into my top five for the year. So you can see that, you know, that, that there's a pretty good amount of books that I've found. And so far I've done the 30 day free trial and then I just renewed for the 1199 a month. Um, and already I've read, what was that, like eight books or something. Um, so already it's well worth it. So the app carries audiobooks and then regular books that you can download in just your normal like EPUB or Mobi format or whatever. But also sometimes other users who, who use the app can upload their own EPUB or Mobi files. So even if you can't find you know mistborn or something in either of those formats another user may have uploaded it in a like either like a document kind of file or like moby or epub or something um so there's like a whole nother section that you can go to to look at and see if anybody else has uploaded these things which is pretty cool it's also fairly user friendly as a whole um i'll talk about this some more in the cons but it's not difficult there's a little bit of a learning curve uh, but especially like the audiobook interface when you're actually listening to an audiobook is not bad at all uh, it feels pretty much just like audible it doesn't have like the note taking features where you can kind of like bookmark something and like make a note about it but it does have pretty much everything else you can increase your speed by certain milestones like 1.2 and then next one up I think is 1.5 and so on and so on. So it's not as dialed in as Audible, but it still functions just fine. Um, and it also has like the sleep timer so you can hit that and it'll kind of turn off in like 30 minutes or whatever. And I think the best perk to this service by far is it allows you to try out a book without having to commit a whole credit. My wish list on Audible often I'll kind of add to it over time and then when I'm ready to, you know, go find a new book to listen to something new, I'll look at my wish list and Honestly, most of the time I'm like, ah, yeah, I, I had an interest in this when I added it to the wish list, but I don't know if I want to spend a whole credit on it, um, on something that I'm like not sure about, if it's like a new book or I, if I haven't heard that many reviews about it or something. And so oftentimes I'll just go to whatever's safe, whatever has good reviews. And I, I tend not to branch out too far, but with this app, like I would have never tried HP Lovecraft probably if I if I hadn't gotten this app and now I'm really glad I did because I'll probably buy a whole bunch of his books honestly same with 112263 like that was sitting in my wish list for a long time and I kept telling myself I'll get to it I'll get to it I'll get to it and then I never did and then when I got this app I was like oh it's it's right there. I could try it for an hour. And if I don't like it, then I can shut it off and I haven't lost any money. And, you know, there's been a few books, you know, on this app where I've been like, oh, I'm probably going to like that book. And I would have spent a credit on it. But then I saw it on this app. I'm like, I'm going to try it out on here for an hour and see if I like it. Tried tried them out for an hour and, and ended up not liking it. So it can save you money as well. Uh, by letting you kind of sample all these books and trying out different things that you wouldn't have normally. 
So let's talk about some of the cons. And again, there are a few, and some of them may be deal breakers for you, depending on what you like to read. So unfortunately, Scribd, as of right now, does not have a whole lot of fantasy and sci-fi. Um, it does have those genres that you can kind of explore, but there's nothing that you would probably recognize. There, there is nothing that made me go, oh, like I want to try this and I want to try that. Um, it, it does have some Brandon Sanderson stuff like the Elantris and Warbreaker and I, I think a few others maybe, but I think where it really shines is horror. It has Dean Koontz's almost entire catalog, I think. I think it's only missing a few of them. Um, and then it's got like a good chunk of Stephen King's books. I have noticed that there is some King that is missing that I would have liked to have listened to, but a lot of it is on there. I think if you go exploring in Scribd's library, you'll find books that you've wanted to read, but you know, like I said, haven't wanted to spend the credit on it that may be outside of the genres that you typically listen to. Uh, but my guess is that in the future, they'll be adding more fantasy and sci-fi as this service grows. Um, I think more and more will get added. So it is a little buggy, uh, just the app in general. Um, it's kind of somewhere between the quality of Libby and Authors Direct. Authors Direct being a steaming pile of dog shit of an app and Libby being okay. Like Libby, I, I don't remember Libby being very buggy, but I just remember it not being very like fun to use. Um, and this is, like I said, some somewhere in the middle. It's not terrible. It's not great. Somewhere right in the middle there. The playback of the audiobook will stop sometimes and you'll have to like pull your phone out of your pocket go back into the app and press play on your book or sometimes it'll make you go back to like the home screen and then re-enter your book if you know what i mean um and it, it seems to only be a problem with audiobooks i haven't noticed it when i'm just like reading on it i haven't done a ton of like just reading ebooks on there but it doesn't seem to have any issues with it. You know, this is something that you just like get used to with, with buggy apps like this, like even Audible, it, it happens sometimes, but not super often. This definitely happens quite often. I'll notice it happening maybe three or four times a day, especially if I pause it for a long period of time. That's usually when I have to go back into the app and kind of restart everything. So it's definitely frustrating, especially at first, but like anything, it's something you get used to. I don't know if you'd really consider this a downside. I think it's more just like a fact of life, but there may be a month or two that you realize there's nothing on the app that you wanna read, but you can easily read five books a month or more with this app. So I guess maybe it evens out a little bit. And you can cancel your subscription if you want to at any time, like you would with any streaming service, like I should do with Netflix. Now, I said it was fairly user-friendly. The main homepage is a bit weird. There's no real library that your books get saved to, all nice and neat in one place. You have to make sure to like bookmark them so that they go into your save tab. But also half the time you'll end up just clicking like just listen now or whatever the button is uh, without ever bookmarking them. So what ends up happening is half your books end up in your save tab and half end up in your like history tab. So I find myself bouncing back and forth between them looking for books that I've been interested in or books that I've like started but didn't finish. Um, so that can be a little bit annoying. And I know it's a small complaint, but the search feature doesn't automatically assume that you're looking for an audiobook. So you have to search and then go over to the audiobook tab, which is kind of annoying. It just gets annoying after a while. And then to read the description of the book, there's like three different things that you have to click on. You have to like click the book saying that you want to like open this mini window. And then you have to click read more and that'll open up a new window. And then there's another read more thing that you have to click to open the full description. Um, and if you're like, if you're on a hunt for a book and you're looking through all their stuff and you're trying to read a bunch of different descriptions, 
that gets really old really, really fast. <laughs> yeah, it could definitely use some improvement to make it a little bit more streamlined because on Audible, like I enjoy diving into Audible and looking through their library to find something new to read. It's just like a good experience. It's super streamlined and easy to do. And with this, like, I kind of dread <laughs> looking for an audiobook on this app. Like, it's not, it's not super terrible, but every time I go to do it, I'm just kind of like, okay, this is going to be a mission. <laughs> Overall, it's a decent app and it's got a 30 day free trial. It's definitely got its major flaws, like the lack of most fantasy or sci-fi books and the periodic need to relaunch the app. But if you look at it for what it is, a, kind of an experimental audiobook subscription service, then it's pretty good. If you're just planning on using it for ebooks, I'd probably recommend just getting like Kindle Unlimited or something or the Libby app. Uh, but if you want to try some audiobooks that you usually wouldn't spend a whole credit on in Audible, you may find some hidden gems that become new favorites like I have with Bone White and 112263. If I were you, I would look into what they have to offer as far as audiobooks and make your own judgment. At least try the 30-day free trial and then you can cancel afterwards if you want. I'm probably going to keep it around for a little while since it has so many Dean Koontz, Stephen King, and H.P. Lovecraft books. I would love to dive further into their libraries. And when I run out of stuff to read, I'll cancel it or maybe I'll forget like I do with Netflix. Again, it's only 12 bucks a month, which is the price of one credit on Audible. So it's automatically worth it if you listen to two books a month, let alone five or six like I do. Like I said, at some point, I'll most likely cancel and just wait until they build their library up a little bit more. Um, which I do, I do believe they will. I think a service like this could really take off. Like, could you imagine listening to the King Killer Chronicles and a Song of Ice and Fire in a month for 12 bucks? Like that's, that's a pretty cool deal. It would basically be Spotify, but for books. Um, and it probably wouldn't be that great for authors, unfortunately, but it's really good for your you know, starving college student or anyone else who can't afford the money to sink into Audible credits. Although they did just go down. Now they're at 30 bucks a month, by the way, for a, th for a pack of them for three. But yeah, I'd say check out Scribd, but be wary and don't forget to cancel your membership after the trial if it doesn't meet your expectations and maybe wait for them to build their library and make the user experience a little bit better if that matters a lot to you. But that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for checking out this video that's sort of outside the norm for us. If you've used Scribd, then comment below and let me know what you think. I really haven't heard a whole lot of people talking about this app, so I'd be interested to hear what your experience was. We'll see you in the next video, and until next time, stay hydrated and eat your Wheaties. Don't judge me.